What is going on, guys? John Kelly here to talk Dana White Contender Series. This is week number eight. We have a fun five fight card matchup on Tuesday night, and I'm excited and ready for it, so let's get into it. Kicking things off in the bantamweight division, we have Pedro Falco going up against James Barnes. Pedro Falco trains out of Brazil. There's not a whole lot of tape on him, but he does seem to be pretty well-rounded. The striking isn't necessarily great, but he should have a striking advantage here along with the power advantage while the fight plays out on the feet. And he is a black belt in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, so he should be able to neutralize the ground game of James Barnes. And on the other side, Barnes has fought in Bellator, He's, he doesn't really have any notable wins, though. Like, the guys that he's beating are typically middling fighters, uh, lo- lower-level fighters. He's a southpaw, but he's definitely a submission specialist. 11 of his career wins have come by submission. Um, 11 of his 14 wins have come by submission. And he recently just fought a 9-10 and 10 opponent who only had one leg last year. And, and he did end up getting the submission, but it just... It wasn't super pretty to me. Um, Three of his four losses have come by knockout, and he turns 40 in a couple weeks. So there's a lot of red flags on James Barnes. And again, going back to Falco, he's a Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu black belt. He knows what he's doing on the ground, and I see that as Barnes' only path to victory. And Falco should be able to neutralize that. So I just don't really see any sort of win condition for James Barnes unless he just completely surprises us and, and, you know, out grapples Falco, which is, again, it's just a small probability in my opinion. So I'm going to go with Pedro Falco to get it done. He's the pick in the D-Gen parlay in our first fight of the evening. Up next in the light heavyweight division, we have Kaloyan Kolev going up against Armin Petrosian. And Kolev is 10-0. He's undefeated prospect. But on the surface, that looks great. But he's actually only fought three fighters with a winning record. And two of those fighters had four or less professional fights. So there is a little bit of concern here in terms of the level of competition. Seven of his 10 wins have come by knockout. So we know he has that power. And all of those knockouts came inside the first round. The only real thing that I kind of like about Kolov is he does have a decent wrestling, has a little bit of a judo background. He he does land takedowns in most of his fights, and a lot of his uh, knockout wins have come by taking his opponents down, getting to mount, and just unleashing that ground and pound. And that's really his his best skill set. But aside from that, I do get some some fraudulent vibes from him just with the padded record, a lot of first round finishes. So we know he hasn't necessarily been tested quite a bit. And yes, he does have that one five round decision victory. So you say, well, he has been tested. We've seen him go 25 minutes. But if you watch that fight, it really wasn't pretty. He was basically just leaning on his opponent up against the fence for 25 Five minutes so it's not like his his cardio was necessarily tested as it would be against a striker like Armin Petrosian if if the fight were extended against him and Petrosian on the flip side he's five and one five of his wins have come by knockout his only loss has come by knockout in the first round where he basically just got caught with a counter shot that put him out but he comes from a Muay Thai background he's a former Muay Thai champion in Russia and honestly his striking looks very good to me I I really like Petrosian striking he should have a clear striking advantage he should have a clear cardio advantage against Kolev who we know tends to fade after the first round especially if he can't get that wrestling going and Petrosian is pretty well tested against grapplers over in Russia. And even when he is taken down, which we've seen him taken down multiple times on the regional scene, he's very good about not giving up control and working back to his feet, continuing to work. He never just settles and gives up the position. And that's big here against Kolov, who if you're going to make Kolov work for those positions and they don't come as easily, that's really going to tax his cardio. And then when the fight does get back to standing and striking, that's where I favor Petrosian to take over as the fight goes on. So we're seeing Kolov currently as a pretty big favorite here. I like taking the underdog shot on Petrosian. I know there are concerns if he does get taken down and Kolov starts getting off on the ground and pound, but I'm willing to take the dog shot. This line is just too wide for me not to when we're getting a a guy who's a much better striker, much more technical striker, and we know he's going to have a cardio advantage. So he just basically has to outlast that first round and try to keep the fight on the feet. So we're going with the big underdog in Armin Petrosian, and he's the pick for the DJ and Parlay in our second fight of the evening. Up next in the light heavyweight division again, we have my guy Kai Barallo versus Jesse Murray. And you guys probably recognize Kai Barallo. 
because he's a fighter that we broke down just three weeks ago on Dana White's Contender Series. Cashed a bet on him back in week five, the individual bet uh, as an underdog against Aaron Jeffrey. And he won a decision, but Dana wasn't super impressed just because he kind of took his foot off the gas pedal in that third round. But honestly, I think more of it was a matchup thing. You know, he fought Aaron Jeffrey, who basically just wanted to hold him up against the cage. But I, I thought he showed off some, some good striking, some smart fight IQ. We know he's a dangerous southpaw powerful striker but he also has that ground game we saw him land multiple takedowns against jeffrey and that was an area that some people expected jeffrey to have a wrestling advantage there so the strength of Barallo, the well-roundedness he's also a black belt in brazilian jiu-jitsu that's going to be a factor here against jesse murray and honestly i don't really have a whole lot to say about murray he does train out of good camp he trains that strength trains out of strong style MMA with Stipe Miocic, Alexa Kamer, uh, Mo Miller, who we also saw in Dana White Contender Series, who uh, basically got snuffed from uh, getting a contract, which still blows my mind. But don't get me started. I've already, I've already sent out enough tweets about how Mo Miller deserves a contract. So shout out to him. But this is a training partner, um, trains out of the same gym. But honestly, I, I just don't really see him having much of a chance here. And it's not because he's a bad fighter. Don't get me wrong. But I just think Kai Baralo is, is more skilled in just about every single area. The striking, I favor Kai Baralo. I think he has a speed advantage. I think he has a power advantage. And he's just got more diverse attacks. You know, you see it with the kicks, um, the jab, the one-two combination. Like, he, he's got more weapons on the feet than Murray. And I honestly think the takedowns are going to come pretty easy here. Like I said, we saw him land multiple in that Aaron Jeffrey fight. I think we see it here as well. And Murray's a guy who just started grappling six years ago. Like, legit just started grappling for the first time. So, um, very, very inexperienced in terms of the grappling. Obviously improving, working with... Um, UFC veterans and UFC current UFC fighters out of strong style but honestly I just think it's a levels thing and Baralo's just better everywhere so we're gonna go with him again um clear grappling edge if he wants to land the takedowns I think he will so he's gonna be the pick for the DJ and parlay in our fourth fight of the night, we have a women's strawweight matchup between Pyra Rodriguez going up against Valeska Machado. And Pyra Rodriguez is 6-0. Five of her six wins have come by knockout. She's the strawweight champion over an LFA. And she's honestly a dangerous striker. She stays like, it kind of reminds me of Julia Avila in a sense, in that she stays patient in the beginning before she gets her reads but she will wait for her spots and then as soon as she sees those openings she will unleash hellish combinations on her opponent and I really like that about her she's also pretty well-rounded she trains regularly with UFC fighters Tabitha Ricci Vanessa Demopoulos who we just saw recently and uh, baby shark Tabitha Ricci has a fight coming up next Saturday um so I mean, she's training with good good people. Um, she's got rounds in with Mackenzie Dern, Sabina Mazo, Justin Keish, just to name a few. So, I mean, we know she's got the level of competition in terms of the people that she's training with. And honestly, I just think she's a really clean striker. I think she's ready for the UFC. And I, I just can't really say the same about Valeska Machado. She's 8-2. and two. She's primarily a striker as well. And uh, her last four wins have come by knockout. So she's kind of similar to to Pyra Rodriguez in a sense, and that she wants to bang it out on the feet. It's just that I don't think she has um, really much of a chance here. She she does have a loss to, uh, I mentioned Tabitha Ricci. Tabitha Ricci's opponent next Saturday, uh, Vales Valeska Machado, actually lost to early on in her professional career on the regional scene. But she previously fought at a smaller weight class, at Adam weight. She's going to be smaller. Um, I think she's going to be less powerful on the feet as well. And honestly, she's just not as technical. Like a lot of her combinations, she's just kind of winging wild hooks. I think Pyra Rodriguez is a lot cleaner. I think she's going to beat her to the punch. And I think she probably boxes her up for 15 minutes. So we're going to go with Pyra Rodriguez. She's a big favorite here, but I think she gets the do job done. She's going to be the pick for the DJ and parlay. That brings us to the main event between Solomon Renfro and Johnny Parsons. This one's at welterweight. Solomon Renfro is another name you guys probably recognize because we talked about that fight when he fought Mike Mallett just a couple weeks ago on Dana White Contender Series. Mike Mallett snatched up the neck, got the submission win, earned a UFC contract. But when these two fought, Solomon Renfro was undefeated at the time, and he was putting it on Mike Millett in that first round uh, to the point where he almost finished him and was just pouring it on him. And Millett ended up catching him with the counter. It was one of the only strikes he landed. And it dropped 
Solomon Renfro. Renfro was still kind of out of it a little bit, dropped to the mat, and before he could even like realize what was going on, Millette just snatched up the neck and submitted him. Um, so I'm not going to fault him too much. I still think the kid's excited. He's an exciting prospect. He trains out of Tiger Shulman with Shane Burgos. He's a regular training partner of Shane Burgos. Eight and one, that only career loss came against Mallet, uh, like we just talked about. And Honestly, I just think he's super powerful, super dangerous, but he you also see the well-roundedness in his game at times. He doesn't show it often because he's so aggressive with his striking, but I you know, when he does get in favorable positions on the mat, like you could tell he he's experienced there as well. So I I think he's a pretty exciting prospect in terms of the matchup here. Johnny Parsons comes from a Muay Thai background. He's the striking uh, the Muay Thai striking coach at Syndicate MMA. He's just 6 and 3 professionally, but a ton of experience in Muay Thai. 5 of his 6 wins have come by knockout. He's very technical, but he struggles when he's not the one moving forward and when he's put on the back foot. And I think that's a problem here against Solomon Renfro, who we know is going to be very aggressive and I think both of these guys are going to try to walk forward and own the center. I just think I trust Solomon Renfro to be the one having more success in doing that. So I'm going to go with Renfro here. I think Parsons probably needs to survive the early storm from Renfro, but then also just take over as the rounds go on in the second and third round if the fight gets extended, just being the more technical striker and possibly the better cardio. But honestly, Renfro's cardio has checked out when it when it, he has had to go 15 minutes. He's been to decision multiple times as well. This one's currently a pick em. I like the Renfro side. If it stays at a pick em long enough, this will be an indiv- individual bet for me, and he's going to be the pick for the D-Gen parlay as well. So like I said in the first fight of the night, I like Pedro Falco. I don't really understand why Barnes is getting this opportunity aside from just Uh, to showcase Pedro Falco, who has the BJJ black belt. He's going to be able to neutralize the grappling attack of Barnes. So we're going with him in the first fight of the night. Second fight of the night is our underdog shot this week in Armin Petrosian, who's going to be a much cleaner striker, much more technical striker, and should have a cardio advantage as well. So I like taking the big underdog shot with him there. In the third fight, we're going back to the well with our guy, Kai Barallo. Already cashed a bet on him once a couple weeks ago against Aaron Jeffrey. I think he's just better than his opponent everywhere in this matchup so we're going back to him in the fourth fight we're going with my girl Pyra Rodriguez she's just honestly a much better striker much more powerful much more well-rounded I think she's better everywhere than her opponent she's a big favorite but I think she gets the job done and then in the main event Solomon Renfro this one's going to be a banger both guys are going to move forward I just think he's more powerful and more dangerous especially early on in the fight so we're going to go with him in the main event So that's it, guys. I appreciate the support. I appreciate you joining us. Do me a favor. If you made it this long, hit the like button. Hit that subscribe button. I definitely appreciate all the support you guys have been giving me lately. That's it. Good luck, and we'll see you guys for week nine. Good luck on Tuesday.